Fabulous friends of Swift, it's Professor John Gallagher. In this lesson, we are going to learn to cut down on our repeated code by learning how to use the for each statement in Swift UI to use a single block of code multiple times while iterating through our enum. I've got big learning for each of you. See what I did there? Let's code! Now, as of our last lesson, we have a functioning Dungeon Dice app. We can click each button and get a random value simulating a dice roll. Now, we could say we're done, but we're on a journey to become a professional developer and write higher quality code. And we can see that there's lots of repeated code in here. This violates our DRY, our dry principle, don't repeat yourself. Now you might wonder, is there a way we can iterate through the dice enum and create a single button for each case so that we don't have to repeat ourselves? And as they say in Italian, certo, which means of course. Now first, so I don't get confused when working on my new code, I'm going to fold code for the group that holds all of my buttons. That'll help me find the ends of the group code where the buttons are. I'm going to highlight this command slash to comment it out. When I do, Xcode unfolds the code, but I'm sure now that I've commented out all of the code with buttons inside of it. Now before we work with buttons, let's start with something less complex. How about a simple text field with a string inside? So let's create an array of strings with each string containing the name of one of our Dungeons & Dragons players. And then we'll use this array to create a text field for each of the players. So why don't we head to the top where we usually create our state variables and we'll say state private var players equals and then in the brackets, I'll put in the names of the Stranger Things kids that play D&D. &D. So L, Mike, Will, Lucas, Sam, and Dustin. There are more, but this is enough. And by the way, as I think through this, as I add the voiceover, I'm actually not changing the array in any of these next examples. So I don't even need to create this as a state variable, but there's no harm in leaving it in here. Just know that I added something that I didn't need to here. Now down in our code below our last spacer, we know that we can create text views for each array in an element like this. Text, passing in between the parentheses, player one, bracket zero, bracket. Then I'll copy this, paste this a few more times. I can change the numbers to one and two. And we can see that we've got three text views for L, Mike, and Will. And just so that it's easier to read, because it's just kind of small here, I'm gonna put these three text views inside of a group. And then at the end of the group, I'll add a font large title modifier. Easier to see. Now at this point, you might think, well, I'm coding in Swift and I know how to use the for loop. So why don't I just use one here? So why don't we enter in between parens for player in players, curly braces, and in between the curlies, text passing in player. I'll delete these unneeded text views. But no, says Xcode. We get an error closure containing control flow statement cannot be used with result builder view builder. Now this is Xcode saying you can't use a for loop here in Swift UI. Now while you can add some logical code like if statements inside of your views, you can't use standard Swift loops like for, while, repeat while inside of a view like this. It's still totally okay to use them inside of functions or methods that you write. You just can't use them inside of views. But fear not, Swift UI comes with a special statement for each. This is a special structure that can be used to iterate through values inside of a view, and we can use this to create subviews. So let's give this a try. First, we're going to delete this non-working loop. That code won't work inside of our view. And then we're going to say for each. Now, this is upper camel case. For each is a type. Specifically, it's a struct. It's actually a view as well. And we see in code completion, there are a whole bunch of options that accept the same number of parameter values with the same names. If you use the arrow keys to move through them, you'll see some are designed for ranges. There's an int one in here. But as we learned earlier, it doesn't matter which one you select. If a function definition has the same parameters and it just takes different types for the parameters, Xcode, or actually what's called the compiler, will figure that out as it creates the code to run on your device. So feel free to select any of these that show the data and the content. Those are the two input parameters we want. Press return. We are going to run into a problem when we select this, but this is going to be an important step in our learning. So for this first parameter, the way for each works is you enter the value that you want to iterate through. So in this particular case, we want to iterate through the array players. So we'll add players in here. So far, this is correct. Then I'll tab over to content. You can ignore that it says int in mine. Yours might say something different. If you selected a different option in code completion, the Xcode compiler is going to automatically convert this to work with strings. No problem. I can see this is a closure. So I'm going to press return and get that trailing closure format that developers like so much. And we see that we have a value that we pass into this closure. Again, ignore the int part. We can give this element any name we'd like that's a valid name. But since we're iterating through an array called players, why don't we just call this player singular? And then in between the curlies, I'm going to write my text view statement in parens. I'm going to pass in player. 
And now I get this error that says for each needs to conform to identifiable. Now what that means, and the problem here, is that if we're creating multiple views, Swift UI has no way to tell one view from another. And this is really important, especially if we need to work with just one of the many views that we're about to create. So what conforming to identifiable means is we also need to create a unique ID that Swift UI can use to identify one view from the other when we create them with for each. Now Swift UI actually calls this value ID, and here's how we can quickly add this. So after the value parameter up here that we're iterating through, in our example it's the players array, enter a comma, and then we'll add another parameter. It's called ID, and notice as you start to type this, Xcode will offer to add ID since it's an accepted parameter for the for each statement. I'll accept this, and we'll eventually learn to create structures that have unique IDs automatically created inside them. We don't have that yet, so right now what we're going to do is we're going to enter backslash dot self in lowercase. And again, more weird syntax with SwiftUI, but after you type this a few times, you'll get used to it. Now this simply tells Swift UI, hey, it's okay to treat the individual elements of the array, that's the self part, as uniquely identifiable, so you can treat them like an ID. And gadzooks, my friends, will you look at that? We've now got a text view for each element in our player's array. Nice! Now I do want to give you a warning about using the backslash dot self as an identifier. You absolutely do not want to do this if you're not sure that you're going to have unique values in the array or whatever else you're iterating through. And we can show this by pressing play and running this in the simulator. So first make sure that you've got a device selected in the scheme. I've got iPhone 14 Pro selected. Then I'll press play, build and run, hammer time. This rather uninspiring app shows up, but the thing I really want to point out here is that if we open up the debug navigator with this icon in the lower right hand corner, we see that there are no warnings. There's nothing in the console. But now I'm going to head back up to the players array and let's imagine a bunch of buddies move into the neighborhood and they want to play D&D too. And what a coincidence. Some of these new friends have the same names as our classic buddies. So we'll add another Mike, another Sam, and another Will. Very common names. Now press play and build and run and ho ho! We don't just get one warning down here on the console, we get three. That's because we have three repeated values and we're trying to use those values as unique IDs. Xcode gives us the warning. It says ID appears multiple times in the collection. This could give undefined results. So don't use the backslash dot self. If you have values that might repeat, don't fret. We'll learn how to fix this in a future lesson. But for now, we're just learning for each and we're going to iterate through our enum cases. And since enum cases have to be unique, we're not going to run into this problem. Cool. So let's iterate through our enum cases. First, we can delete our players array. We don't need that anymore. And then let's change for each so that instead of iterating through players, we're now going to iterate through dice, capital D, that's our enum. And remember, to iterate through this, we need to say dot all cases, lower camel case after it. And hmm, all cases isn't showing up in code completion. This tips me off that there's an additional something that I need to do. Now, code completion is sometimes slow, but as you code more, you're going to learn to read these signs that something might be wrong. And code completion not working properly sometimes means that something isn't right with my code. And in this case, it's with our enum. Can you think what that might be? Let's keep going and we'll figure it out. So in terms of what we pass into the closure, I don't want to call this constant player anymore. I'm going to change the name to dice. If you're a strong believer in the singular of dice as die, feel free to use that if you'd like. Then in the type, I want to pass in lowercase dice dot raw value. And I do need to put this in a string interp, but it's curious. I'm not seeing raw value show up here and I keep getting this pesky error. Let's see if there are any clues. It says content view dot dice has no member all cases. Hmm. Do you remember this from our enum lesson? Oh yeah, if we want to iterate through the enum using all cases, we need to conform to the case iterable protocol. Now it would be nice if Xcode's error stated that explicitly, but if you encounter this in the future, now you've seen it, so hopefully you'll know what's up. So let's head back to our enum, and right after the int type, we'll enter comma, case iterable, upper camel case. Remember we needed to do that? That's all we need to do. Now let's fix the text view, so we're using a string interp inside, We'll pass in dice dot raw value, no errors. Now we see no changes. The reason for this is live preview is paused, which it does when we run the simulator. Just click on the resume swirly button in the upper right hand corner. If you want to, you can also click stop in the simulator. And now we see text views for each of our raw views. Nice. Now we've used for each to iterate through both arrays. 
and our enum, and we've learned about adding an ID to conform to identifiable, and the problems if IDs aren't unique. We also got a friendly reminder to conform to case iterable if we're iterating through an enum. And now that we've got a good understanding of for each, let's put that button code inside this to see if we can generate seven unique buttons. So I'm gonna go ahead and not just delete raw value, I'm gonna delete the entire text view. Then I'll go down here and find button code in the code that I commented out. I'll highlight it, command slash to uncomment it, copy it with a command C, command slash to comment it out again, and then I'm gonna paste that button code in between the curlies of 4H. Now we've got seven buttons, but they all say 4-sided, but I'll just copy lowercase dice up here and I'll replace every place where it says capital D dice dot four with just lowercase dice. That's once in the button title and twice in the string that's in the button action. And look at that. Now we've got seven buttons, four-sided through 100-sided. Nice. Now let's make these buttons look a little nicer. We'll add some modifiers. We can just cruise to the bottom of our group, find them in the comments, copy those, paste them below the group statement that holds the for each with the button, highlight them in command slash to uncomment them, and I don't need this font modifier either. My indentation is all off. I'll command A, control I, indentation fixed, and look at that, we've got seven magnificent buttons over on the right hand side. Do they all work? Let's click away, and they're working wonderfully. Excellent. Now in our next lesson, we're gonna figure out how we can lay out the buttons in a grid of values, starting in the upper left hand corner across three rows. I can get rid of the comments that have all of that extra code that I don't need anymore. Everything's working. I can also get rid of this group clause. I don't need that anymore either. But if you compared what we saved, we went from 34 lines of code to just eight lines of code and only one button view declared. There's a Japanese beer called Super Dry and a certain clothing store where the cool kids shop. Super Dry also describes your code because you did not repeat yourself. Excellent work, Swifter. But I hope you feel comfortable using the for each statement. There was lots of big learning in this lesson, and there's more big learning ahead. Keep hacking!